Hi everyone, Amber here from So Majestic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are sewing up month four of Cotton Cuts Puzzle Mystery Quilt, The Carnival. I am sewing up the Lemonade colorway for The Carnival. It's the fall 2023 Puzzle Mystery Quilt. Um, next month or next week really, they are doing the reveal if you are also doing the Village Green puzzle mystery quilt and I believe the new colorways for next spring will be announced soon. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you are enjoying this video but also if you plan on joining up for the next one as well and I hope you enjoy I hope you find it helpful and if you do I'd love if you subscribe and help my channel grow. So we are ready to start month four of the small carnival puzzle mystery quilt. I have my lemonade fabric chart here. I have my clue with all the instructions. I love laying out my pieces exactly like this chart shows. So on my table, I have them all laid out. So it makes it much easier for me to grab. I am sewing on a Singer 5528 using Aurifil thread and a 7010 universal needle. And I also have my wool pressing mat and steam fast iron. All right, so let's start our first section. This month we have two sections, 4A and 4B. On the video, I'll be making one of each. So to start with 4A, we are going to be making, in the directions it says two, so for the video I'm just going to do one. Um, so we're starting with a small triangle A, which if you are doing the lemonade colorway is a um, the white fabric and a small triangle E which is my blue and section 1.2 I'm gonna lay them both out at the same time we need another triangle A and a small triangle C So I always lay mine out so that way I can fold them and start sewing and make sure that I am sewing along the correct lines, not sewing them incorrectly. You can pin or clip when they're small. I tend to just hold them. And I'm sewing at a quarter inch seam allowance. I never measure mine. Um, as long as you're using the same seam allowance, your blocks will all fit together nicely. You can use the scant quarter inch, but I am not very accurate with scant. So I just keep using a straight quarter inch. And I never have had a problem with my blocks coming together or lining up. Make sure I trim off everything. Okay, and our little arrows show us which way we are pressing the seams. So we are pressing towards the A triangle. So I always press from the back first and then finger press open. Um, especially with these half square triangles, I. You want to try not to pull. Your fabric can easily warp. Okay, so we are on step two. We are going to join our 1.2, which is our AC half square triangle to the right of our 1.1. And then we are gonna add in a square of our B fabric. Um, so you wanna just double check that your fabrics um, are correct. So for me, the blue is on the left, the green is on the right, that looks good. So I'm gonna start by sewing this one first. Thank you. 
And then if we open that up, our B is gonna go to the right. So I'm just gonna line that up on this side and then I'll press my seams after. Okay, and our, um, our seams are going to go towards our center. So I'm gonna press the back first and then gently open. And then the same thing for this side. Definitely want to make sure that I'm not pulling. All right, so I'm going to move this to the side for now. So we are on step three, and we need our larger A triangle. And we need a small triangle C, which is this um, green that has a lot of colors on it. That's gonna go on the left-hand side. And then a small triangle B, which is gonna go onto the right. So we are gonna start with our right-hand side. I'm actually just gonna flatten this piece out. It was bent a little bit. I'm gonna line this side up first. And because these are die cut, they should line up exactly. press towards the B triangle. So I'm going to press that open. And now I'm going to attach our C triangle. And again, it should line up perfectly. And this one is also going to be pressed towards the small triangle C. Okay, we have a nice flying geese here. So now our next step, step four, using our flying geese that we just made, we are going to attach an F square to the right of it. And F for me is this really beautiful uh, yellow fabric. And then this one here, our seams are gonna be pressed uh, towards the flying geese. So I'm going to press my back first and then gently open it. And I don't know about you, but I love all the different colors and fabrics in my colorway. They're just so bright and vibrant. 
and I don't normally work with like these yellows, brownish colors, so um, I'm really happy to be trying something new. Okay, so for step five, I'm just gonna set this one aside. Um, so now we need a large rectangle A, which is my white fabric, and we are going to attach a smaller rectangle B to the right hand side. And for this, we are pressing our seams to the smaller B rectangle. So now I can gently open. Okay, so our last step, we are attaching all three pieces or all three sections together. Um, so our first thing that we are going to do is our step five, so the long skinny rectangle that we just did, we are gonna attach it to the bottom of our step four. So this is going to go on top, the one with um, that we did in step four, right? Yes. Just make sure because we see we have two different flying geese with the square attached, so you wanna make sure you are using the correct one. Um, so I, when I fold these, you can see here that we have a seam. I'm going to make sure that I match that seam up. And for this, because it is a larger piece, I'm actually going to use clips to hold it. So I'm going to match my seam first and then match the rest. And you can see here, I, the seams are going um, different ways. They are pressed different ways, so they are sandwiched together nicely. Uh, but if you are using a full quarter inch, you might notice that you have a little bit extra hanging off the left-hand side. I'm not gonna worry about that. That is gonna get hidden in my seam allowance. It's just because I used a full quarter inch. And so this seam allowance is going to be pressed uh, towards the center, towards the rectangle pieces. So I'm going to press the back first and then gently open. And the points, they have a little tiny, tiny bit off. They shifted a little bit while I was sewing, but I'm not really picky. I not worry about it. I'm not going to pull that out. But if you um, come across a point where it's not perfectly lined up, you could always um, pick out your stitches and resew it. Okay, and then the next step we have to attach our bottom piece here. So again, I am going to line up my seams first. And then I'm going to align the rest of it. And again, here I am using clips because it is definitely a longer piece.
Okay, and again, this one is also going to be pressed um, towards the center where we had the longer rectangle. So I'm going to press my back seams first and then gently finger press them open. And yeah, this one lined up much better. It didn't shift while I was sewing. I don't use a walking foot. I don't have one that fits this machine very well, um, but I definitely recommend if you do have a walking foot to use it because that is one of the reasons why this moved on me. It will help pull your fabrics together evenly. And I actually had said that this was the last step. It's not our last step. Um, we have a few more over here. So I'm gonna put this section to the side for now. And we have a 7.1, a 7.2, and a 7.3. I'm gonna do all of them at once. Uh, so 7.1 needs a E triangle, which is my blue fabric and a uh, C triangle, which is my green. And then it also needs another C triangle, which is my green again, and an A, which is my white triangle. So I'm going to sew both of these half square triangles together now. just chain stitch this saves me from having to cut so much thread off okay, and they're both going to be pressed um, towards our bottom. So the first one is going to be pressed towards the C and our second one is going to be pressed towards our A fabric. So again, I'm pressing the back side first and gently opening these. Okay, and then 7.3 is our little small A rectangle, which is here. And we are going to join um, our 7.1 to the top of our 7.2. So for me, it's like this green fabric will be in the middle and then our 7.3 on the bottom. So I'm going to press this here and sew this one first. And our seams are being pressed towards the top, towards our E fabric. So I'm gonna gently open that here. And you'll notice that your um, fabric, like your C fabric, won't continue to the corner. That's okay. Um, that is gonna be hidden in our seam. So it's, it shouldn't be to the corner. 
And then we are going to attach our A fabric on the bottom. And it doesn't have an arrow here. So I'm going to look at the next step when it comes to pressing. I'm gonna attach this first because I'm not sure which way we need to press our seams on this one. Okay, so before I press our seams, this uh, section that we just made in step seven is going to go uh, to the left of our step six. So this was our step six that we just set aside, and this is gonna go on the left-hand side of these. So we have one large piece, and I'm gonna look here. Okay, so for this, I have pressed my seams up so for this one here, I'm also going to press my seams up. So let me press them first, gently open. All right, so now this is going to be attached to the left and you can see that this um, section here, for me it's green, it's um, our C block, is all going to be lined up. Um, so what is most important for me is I'm gonna line up our seams here with the seams here. So I'm going to take my time, make sure they're pressed up right against each other, and you can see where this is sticking out a little bit, but again, I'm just hiding that in the seam allowance. So I'm not trimming it, and I'm not lining up this fabric with it. It's sticking out further. So when I sew that, it's just gonna get hidden in our quarter inch seam allowance. You could always trim it um, if it's easier for you but that just adds one more step for me. For this one, our seam allowance is going to be pressed to the left to the piece that we just added. And gently pull it open. And this one has a lot of seams. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more heat to try to help it lay flat especially the center here. We have a lot of seams coming together right there. All right, so now this really was our last step of 4A. And you can see that um, I took the time to line it up. So it lines up fairly well on this side, I'm pretty happy with it. And this is a really beautiful block. It combines so many different colors. Okay, so I'm gonna set this to the side and we are gonna start our section 4B. Okay, so now we're on to section 4B. We are gonna make two of them. Um, so it's all half square triangles and we need two of 1.1, four of 1.2 and two of 1.3. And I'm just going to um, make one of these, two of these. I'm gonna do one block on camera. Um, so to start for 1.1, we need our C triangle, which is our green, and an E triangle. We are making one of those. 
Our next one is a B triangle and a C triangle. And we are going to make two of those. So I'm going to lay out two. And then our section 1.3, we need an A triangle and a B triangle. All right, so now that I have them all laid out, I am gonna chain stitch these all together. Uh, that way I don't have to keep cutting threads. It makes it a little bit quicker. Like I said, the best part is Cotton Cuts has cut everything for you and they line up perfectly. trim my threads, snip between. Okay, and I just need to be mindful of which way we are pressing them. Uh, so our first triangle that has the C and E fabric is being pressed towards the E. So for me, that's that blue section. So I'll gently fold this open. Okay, our step uh, 1.2, which has the B and C fabric, is going to be pressed towards our B side. For me, that's the golden brown. Okay, and our 1.3 is going to be pressed towards our A triangle which is the white triangle. Okay, and now this can be a little bit confusing because we have so many half square triangles and so we wanna pay attention to our fabrics. So for step two, we are joining our 1.3 section, the one that has our A, to the top of one of our 1.2s. So this nice um, B fabric is going to match up. Pressing this uh, towards our bottom, towards that B, C half square triangles. Okay, and I'm just gonna set this aside for now. And our next step is we are joining our 1.2, which is our BC, to the top of our 1.1. .1. 
again going to make sure this lines up nicely. And this is going to be pressed towards our top section. Give the back a press first. Gently open. Okay, and now we are on step four. We are going to attach our two together. So our step that we finished in step three is going to go to the right of step two. And I'm going to make sure that I line up these center points because we have fabrics that are matching there. I'm definitely using clips for this one. pressing our seams to the left, the side that has our white A triangle in the top. Gently fold that open. All right, and now this is our section 4B. And we are all set. All right, we just finished up month four. You should have two sections of 4A and two sections of 4B. I am in love. This is one of my favorite sections, I think, so far. Um, just all the different colors in it are so beautiful. So let me know what you think about your colorway and if you're having fun and I hope to see you next month. Thanks.